This episode of Around the Layout is brought to you by Home Shops, the freelance model railroad specialists. Visit homeshops.net to see their latest limited edition offerings, including the Virginian and Ohio company service tank cars and the just arrived GSC 86 foot tangent box cars, available in seven freelance road names. Keep up with all of the new offerings by joining the Home Shops Facebook group and signing up for general shop bulletins at homeshops.net. I have received a sneak peek, and you don't want to miss what's next from Home Shops. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Around the Layout, where model railroaders come to tell their story. My name is Ray Arnott, so glad you could join us. It's time to talk about the supercharged high-speed Texas Express 2023 NMRA National Convention being held in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And joining me to do that, please welcome the marketing chair, Riley Triggs. Thanks for having us. And registrar, Chris Adkins. Hey, how's it going, Ray? Chris, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you both for joining me tonight. I'm really excited to talk about this upcoming national convention. It'll actually be my first NMRA national convention, and very cool that it's in a place I really love to go to, which is the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I'm looking forward to getting back down there. Well, we look forward to having you. Well, I'll be good. It'll be good to be there. So let's uh, let's get started, and I'm going to start with uh, we'll start with Riley, and we'll ask him this uh, before we get into all these exciting events that are happening with the Texas Express. Uh, how did this come about? How does uh, y- your division uh, get involved in hosting a national convention? Well, that's a very long story, and um, uh, to make it short. Um, the, the instigator of this was really Mike Mackey, um, who is now an NMRA, I think it's the Western District Board of Director, uh, serving at the national level. Um, and he was the, uh, the local uh, division director uh, there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, and he made a pitch uh, to host the national convention several years ago, uh, back when um, the convention was in Salt Lake. That's where he made... Uh, his first pitch, put together a video and PowerPoint presentation, went out there, um, talked up all the great stuff that's going on in Dallas-Fort Worth, um, and uh, was able to get the convention to uh, come to uh, the little state of Texas and all the wonderful stuff that we have here. It, it, it kind of sounds familiar. It sounds like a kind of a, a process of getting the Olympics of, of sort, isn't it? It's it is very much parallels. like that. Yes, yes. You, you have to uh, you have to get uh, you know millions of dollars of backing from corporate sponsors and uh, payola, lots to, and lots of payola, lots of payola. Mm-hmm. You know, lots of uh, local people throwing in uh, you know their hats in the ring to promise to help and do all these wonderful things. Um, so yeah, it was quite a production to to pull this together and uh, to really you know sell the idea that uh, Dallas Fort Worth would make a great convention and uh, it's shaping up to be one. So when you're given the uh, the, the uh, opportunity to host the national uh, convention, is there like a playbook? Is there some kind of like, you know, kind of a plan or at least some kind of checkbox that's handed to you from the national organization? Yeah, there is, there is a convention manual. Um, and all the different areas are, are broken down into how, you know, you do contests and layout tours and do the marketing and, uh, everything is, uh, kind of spelled out on, on how to do stuff. Um, but of course there's, there's not infinite detail to that. Um, and so all of that has to, you know, be done on the fly and, um, kind of learned, uh, as you go along and, and do it. Um, but you know, there are resources of people who have done this before. Uh, most of us have helped put on regional conventions for, you know, the past 20 years or so. Uh, so, uh, we've got a lot of experience and a lot of people were able to just jump in and do the things that they knew how to do. Um, like, you know, Chris, who's handling the registration, uh, that's something that he's done for the regional for several years now. Um, and so, um, you know, he knew what to do just walking right into it. Uh, so we have a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of talent, a lot of experience, and it looks like it's uh, coming together really well now. So, Chris, you're doing the registration, as, as uh, Riley mentioned. 
when you do it, when you do go from a regional to a national, is it like pretty much like the same process on a bigger scale or is it like kind of like a kind of relearning the whole thing? Well, at a regional convention, when, you know, you get 150 of your friends that you, uh, many of whom you've been to their house and you know where they all live and you've spent the last 20 some years in the region, you know, being around them. When you put up a website and it crashes or something, it's not a huge deal. For the national, it's a little bigger, bigger deal. So we decided that we should have like a real website, you know, a real registration website and stuff like that. So, so there's some things like that. And, and the, you know, of course the order of magnitude is, you know, we're, we're, you know, open for a thousand people. Um, you know, that's a big deal, big difference from, you know, 150 people, sure. which is a good convention. You know, a hundred people is maybe a more typical convention. So that's a, you know, 10X, you know, yeah. right there. So that's, that's a, that's going to be a bigger, a bigger deal. Also the amount of money, you know, that it costs is, is also significantly different. Um, you know, everything, you know, the, the, the NMRA wants these to be at, you know, five-star hotels. And um, so we're, you know, we have to, we have to deal with that and, and everything around that. So anyway, so the Gaylord deal you know, is where we're having it, which is uh, in Grapevine, very close to the airport. And it's, you know, first rate facility. It's big enough that they, the National Train Show will actually be at the hotel, you know, right there in the convention center. So that's that's pretty cool. So you can actually fly in, take the shuttle to Grapevine, go to, you know, to the Gaylord and never have to leave until you fly home. So that's kind of cool. Was it was it kind of like the, the 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 first venue that you looked at? Kind of like it just when when you guys said national convention, it's like this has got to be the place to have it down there, or was it kind of like a, a process of even selecting the venue? I don't think either of us were involved in selecting venue. That actually happens at the national level. Oh wow! So they, um, you know, there was there was a lot of back and forth of where it should be. You know, Dallas is of course, and Fort Worth both have you know excellent hotels. You know, we Dallas. You know, famously hold, held held the uh, you know Republican National Convention for uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, and so the the Anatole downtown is a you know fantastic first rate hotel. That's where they had that at, uh, you know. But um, and the convention centers down there, so you, we could have had it in either city pretty easily. But the beauty of having it in Grapevine is it's in the middle. It's easily a lot easier to access all the things on the other side when you're in the middle. Plus, it's a railroad town. You know, they have a steam railroad in Grapevine. Uh, that's currently uh, having a steam engine you know, worked on, but uh, but the city of Grapevine actually owns a vintage railroad, you know. So they run from there to the Fort Worth Stockyards, which is pretty cool, and it's one of our excursions. And and uh, the, it um, it also has a new uh, light rail system that connects Fort Worth to the uh, DFW airport. And so there's a lot of really great things about um, you know the Grapevine as a town. And the Gaylord as a venue. So anyway, we're looking forward to that part. So yeah, what we're talking about here is the Gaylord Texan Resort and Convention Center. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, Lots of things to do. We've got dining. You've got spa, fitness, water park, resort pool, uh, entertainment and events. Just amazing amount of things that you can do right there on the property without even leaving. Having been to other you know national conventions, I could definitely tell you that a lot happens um, when all the the local guys have gone home for the night. There's a lot still going on at the convention. A lot of fun things happening. You know, if you're going, if you want to, if you want to have a drink w- with uh, Gordy in the you know one of the hotel bars, it's not going to happen during the day when all the local guys are there. It's going to happen at night when you guys are basically the only ones there. Assuming that I'm not staying at the hotel, which you know I may or may not. Who knows? There you go. So somebody's got to feed the dogs, though, right? So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> So for you, Riley, are you originally from Texas, and uh, where, where are you residing right now? I am actually a native Texan and a native Austinite, so I'm actually living in Austin still. Um, and there are a couple of us that are not in the DFW area um, that you know had areas of expertise and have jumped in to help this. So um, a lot of people from the region and you know around the state who are helping put this thing on too, uh, but most of the guys are in the DFW area. Excellent, and for and for you, Chris. I think we went back when we go. It's been a while since we've interviewed, so I can't quite remember. But I think you immigrated to Texas. Is that correct? I was born in Amarillo, Texas. Oh, were you? My dad, okay. is, my dad grew up in Amarillo, so I am actually a Texan by birth. But I did not grow up here. I grew up in the far north reaches of of Wyoming on the Montana border. 
Actually, and then got I, back I, here I, as quickly as possible. Right? Yeah, that's what they all say, right? I wasn't born <laughs> yeah. here, but I got here as fast as I could. Uh-huh. Um, no, I moved back here in 2000 after I finished graduate school. I'd been working in Idaho, and uh, we I took a job here in 2000, so I've been here since then. All right. Well, now that we know we're talking to two true Texans, let's get back to talking about the Texas Express. And when this all kicks off, let's take a look at that schedule. Wait, we have a schedule? Yes, it's timetable. Oh. Yeah. There oh. it is. Yeah, neither one of us are in charge of that, so we don't know. Yeah. Anything. No, we don't <laughs> oh, know. is that right? Okay. Oh, all I know is when they tell me to show up places. So it looks like things kick off on Sunday uh, on site with some registration and tour sales. And then uh, looks like uh, maybe some clinics as well on Sunday. So um that 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 kicks that event off but it really seems like monday we really start rolling into the heavy events also the operating sessions are going full steam by sunday oh excellent excellent we'll, we'll get to those in a second uh monday we've got uh some some tours going on as well i want to talk about that let's let's talk about that first uh, uh prototype tour because that's one i know i'm excited about and my good buddy mark eric the bnsf fan is excited about mm-hmm. which is the bnsf tour can you guys talk on that one for a second so we currently have a waiting list. It's uh, very, very popular. We've had uh, two buses fill up, and, of course, we are crossing our fingers at BNSF. When we show them how many people are interested to come visit their organization and how many fans they have of their company, that they will you know, let us have some more folks come in. But uh, as of right now, we've sold out. I have been on this tour before. It is a lot of fun because not only do you see the Network Operations Center, which a lot of people, that's the main reason they want to go, is they want to see where all the trains are dispatched, which is, if you've ever been to NASA in Houston, it's nothing like that. Everyone wants to compare it to NASA. It is nothing like that. <laughs> NASA is a little tiny facility, a little tiny room. But this is a massive facility that you could play several games of basketball in. Wow. And it's all in a class five tornado proof building. Um, and they have a viewing platform behind windows that you can kind of get up there and see all that going on. But everybody's got, you know, even 20 years ago, everybody had, these cubicle basically they don't call they call them pods but they're work areas with all these monitors filling up the area and it's it was very very computer centric even you know ever since it was built you know it's been a long time since anybody dispatched a train with a levers and knobs and lights and stuff so but it's it's a it's a pretty neat uh, it's a pretty neat facility but they also have um a collection of all the art that they use in their advertising um, in the early 20th century, which is pretty impressive, they've got um, they've got four passenger cars on display out front that you can look at, um, and then of course there's the BNSF employee store, which is kind of fun. They, and what I would on it, we got to go in there and buy a hat or whatever we wanted to, which is fun. But there's there's other things, you know, that that are there, but they're not going to take you to the libraries, let you look at all the books or anything like that. But um, but you know all the public things. And then a lot well, of it's public. Too. You got to be on a tour to see it. I'm sorry, but the things that are generally available. And then Alliance Yard is right there too. They're intermodal. Oh yeah, yeah. And then that's right. You also go on Alliance Yard tour, which is a big intermodal yard. Yeah, and it looks like a driving tour of the uh, Alliance intermodal yard, and and uh, I know my buddy Mark's got a big shopping list for that uh, BNSF store, so. He's going to be coming out of there, hopefully, with a whole bunch of swag. And, and you know, that'll you're not going to find the latest Jeevo models in HO scale there. I'm sorry, they don't have them. No, I think he's looking for you know apparel and maybe bath towels and a, a shower curtain and you know whatever else that he can think, get. BNSF. Think about a so. mug. How about a mug? Maybe a pin set. I'm trying to remember what those kinds of things they have there. But they do have uh, jackets and shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't remember towels, but. He's looking for anything with that, uh, anything with that BNSF swoosh, he likes logo. The swoosh, huh? He likes the swoosh. So, uh, right. yeah, that, that'll be a, a good time and looking forward to, to seeing that facility. Then on Tuesday, uh, looks like there's a tour to the Museum of the American Railroad in Traintopia. And this one's one I haven't heard about before. Can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Have you so been the, mu- the museum yeah. um, has a lot of prototype um, locomotives and cars and whatnot. Um, they actually, they have a big boy there. Um, I don't remember the number 4014 or something like that. Um, not the running, but it's on display. Yeah, it's the big boy 4018. 4018, there you go. They have a GG1 um, there. 
there, yep, there's F F units and doodle bugs and because yep. uh, everybody comes to Texas for the big boys and the GG ones, right? Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this is that territory, sure, of course, and, right? Uh, what else they got? So this, the, this museum used to be at our Fair Park, and they moved it there to Frisco years ago. Um, it's never really they've never really built a visitor center. Um, so you have to basically, they've got a, like a public time. You can go, you go across the street to the Traintopia, which is the, what, the other part of this, right? And you can set up a visit of the train museum. But the best time to go to the train museum is one of these events because they kind of open it up and you can just have the run of the place. Anyway. And the Traintopia is, you know, um, like, I, I, I can't remember how big it is, but it's, uh, you know, 1,500, couple of thousand square feet of G-scale railroading, I believe. It used to be in a guy's house, and uh, it yeah. was featured on uh, some some TV show where the guy talked about how he built his million dollar train set. Um, it didn't cost a million dollars, but it is an impressive G scale layout. Um, and uh, they based, I think, when the guy passed away, somehow they they were able to to get it and set up this uh, you know kind of public viewing space of it museum, I guess you'd call it, which happens to be right next to the. American video game museum, oh, no which is also very cool, especially if you grew up in the eighties. <laughs> Excellent. So some Nintendo and some That's, Sega, maybe. Well, Sega was probably nineties, right? So you'd probably uh, be Nintendo and all, all of it. But think yeah. earlier than that. Come on. Oh, okay. Atari uh, twenty six hundred, uh, the okay. Pong game. You know. Well, all I can't, this, all the other stuff. I can't think as far back as you can, Chris. So. <laughs> Nintendo was kind of my starting point. Uh, so you have to go kids, back. Kids today, they don't appreciate the classics. Maybe we'll have to go on the tour together, and you can give me a lesson. So on it, your... it was a lot of fun to go through there with a child of yeah. yours and point out all the things you had when you were their age. That's that's for sure. And then on Wednesday, this is another one that's really neat for uh, prototype: uh, the Saginaw Rail Industry Tour. Uh, there's the Atterbury grain elevators. I think you sent me down to Atterbury the last time I was in Texas. I think you sent. I don't know where me. Atterbury is, but let's try Saginaw. Yeah, Saginaw. There. Where's Atterbury? That sounds exciting. I think that's. I think that is one of the names of the of the grain elevators that's there, isn't it? Oh, it's the owner of the elevator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yep. and then the gotcha. Saginaw Diamond, the Tex Rail Maintenance Shop tour. So that's a that's a really uh, action packed uh, prototype tour there. This is probably the the highlight of the rail tours, I think, um, because it, it features getting to go up into one of those grain elevators. It's a you know a working elevator. Um, it's limited in how many people we can take up there because of that. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know what the uh, the restriction is. Is it is it like twenty five people or? I don't remember how many spots we had, Chris, but um, but I believe that's probably it's more than all. that. But it's more than that. Okay, it's a bus load. It's a bus load, so it's like fifty or so. Um, but that's probably going to be the the most popular, um, you know, once in a lifetime getting to go up in a working grain elevator. Uh, so I think that's one that a lot of people are looking at and excited to go on. Yeah, for sure. Just to be able to have the uh, access to the on the inside of a grain elevator, and then you know those action packed places like the Saginaw Diamond, and be able to see a maintenance shop, you know, for Tex Rail would be really a cool uh, opportunity for for anybody see, uh, that's yeah. into railroading. Yeah, I actually signed up for that tour, but uh, all I care about is going to the top of the grain elevator, and so yeah, I'll make sure you wear whatever your- they do. Okay, I'm along for the ride. There you go. Just make sure you wear your close toe shoes and no high heel sandals or flip flops allowed. Uh, there. So you know you have to. You have it's, to. I don't know what it'll be like in August in Texas without my high heeled sandals. So I'm gonna. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to give it a try and find out, Chris. So. And then uh, <laughs> let's. Like a good way to get your toes sunburned to me. That's for sure. That's for sure. All right, taking a look at the rest of Wednesday, we got a historic station tour. And it reads here, traveling via TRE, visit three historic depots. This tour will start at Dallas Union Station, where your guide will explain the local rail history as you explore the building. Then hop on TRE and head to Fort Worth to tour the Santa Fe Depot and Freight House. Then we head to the Texas and Pacific Depot for happy hour at the TNP Tavern and rail fanning the trains from Union Pacific's Davison Yard before heading back to the convention. This tour will have historian Elliot Wright as your guide through history. Elliot um, is going to be quite a treat to have on this because he is a working preservationist uh, professional uh, and architecture and railroads are, um, I think, kind of his, his pet interests. 
Um, so he's going to have a lot of insight into, you know, the, the style of the architecture, how things function, uh, the materials and, you know, how it was put together, um, any sort of preservation efforts that have been going on with these things. So he's going to be a wealth of information uh, that is, you know, somebody you don't normally get to talk to when you're going around looking at train stuff. Yeah, excellent opportunity to to learn from somebody you know, with all of his experience, and then you know to be able to see these beautiful places and, and, and a lot of history there. And you get to do it uh, by rail, uh, traveling in between them. Uh, you know, seeing these places as they were meant to be seen. Right. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun too. Just getting to ride those. Absolutely. And then on Thursday, the McKinney Avenue trolley. Have any of you ever, either one of you, ever taken that ride? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Now the, the highlight of this though, um, you know, we're going to get to go into the back shops and see where they're restoring all of these trolleys. Uh, these are historic trolleys that come from all over the country. And, uh, I think maybe even some from like South America and whatnot, um, where they're being restored and put back on the tracks. Um, and then, uh, and then the, the shop foreman, uh, is actually a cat. Uh, his name is stone. And looks like a very, very friendly cat. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to seeing him as well. Absolutely. And then uh, also on Thursday is the uh, Texas State Railroad excursion. This one looks like a fun one. Yeah, Texas State Railroad is uh, Palestine to Rusk, which is out in the, the, people don't know this, but uh, East Texas is full of pine trees. And so they had uh, like a log, logging operations went out, out there, but they've... Um, State of Texas owns a steam railroad out there, and that one will have steam engines for sure. Excellent. For those that like steam, this is going to be uh, one you're going to want to get yourself on. And, again, this is Thursday. And then Friday is a, is a ride that I've taken, the Grapevine Vintage Railroad Excursion, and I think you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Riley, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, I think the neatest thing about this is that you actually have a destination. Um, you go from Grapevine uh, over to the stockyards, and you get to walk around the historic Fort Worth stockyards. Um, lots of interesting displays and food and you know things to do there uh, and check out before you get back on the, the train and come back to Grapevine in the hotel. So uh, that's not just trains. Again, a lot of this stuff has you know other other things associated with trains. Um, that make it just kind of a, you know, a special activity that is something you don't get to do every day, um, you know, where you're coming from all over the country. So um, the Grapevine is, is a really well-run railroad. Um, you know, this is one of the top tourist attractions in Grapevine, uh, and the city really supports it, like Chris was talking about before. Uh, they've got a depot there. Uh, I think their city hall, they even styled after – uh, a railroad station. So, you know, they're all in on railroading and historic downtown uh, atmosphere. Uh, so just wandering around Grapevine before or after getting on the train uh, would be fun as well. I, I can say personally, when I took this ride, uh, uh, the, the the ride is, you know, for, for adults and kids, but really great for the kids. The, uh, the, the, the skit that they put on where the, you're helping the railroad detectives solve the mystery <laughs> of who robbed the Grapevine Vintage Railroad. I know my two young kids had a blast. So if you have kids, this is one that you definitely want to take them on. They're going to really enjoy that. So another interesting thing about the destination, of course, which is the stock here, you spend some time there. You, you got enough time to eat lunch plus, you know, do a lot of the activities but this this was the heart of beef production in this part of the state and and probably the the largest beef production facility in texas was the stockyards armor and swift each had two massive massive facilities right next to each other and what's left of it is this one little street but you look at these photos in the museums there and you realize oh this was this was insanely big mm-hmm. this was and and there's a lot of interesting history there and if you're interested in you know and you know packing houses and and how the railroads worked there and whatnot you can you can get a feel for that um at the at the stockyards and and also you can see them you know run longhorn cattle down the middle of the street and things like that too which is very touristy but it's still a lot of fun yeah, it was definitely a good time. I, I brought my family down there, and we got to see the, uh, you know, like you said, them them driving the cattle down the street, and 
my uh, daughter got to sit on a longhorn and kind of had that whole uh, Texas experience there with that the tourist the touristy Texas <laughs> yeah, experience know, every, and then every year we got to go sit on a longhorn you know because yeah. we live in Texas there you go that's 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 <laughs> I guess what you guys do down there so um, yeah and I, I guess there's some other events that may happen there as well looks like they do some rodeos from time to time there and uh, there's a know, rodeo there yeah, yeah. also uh, Bill or uh, Billy Bob's right Billy Bob's which is like the lar- largest honky tonk mm-hmm. in the world is there. Okay. And, uh, and that's going to be an evening activity. Uh, yeah. That's activity. another one of the evening activities, but it, it is there. It's, it's, it's all of the uh, stockyards. And you can ride a uh, mechanical bull there too sure. as well. So that's, that's something okay. if, uh, you know, a, a live longhorn isn't enough for you, you can get on a mechanical one and see how long you can last. Yeah, let's let's talk outside of the convention for a minute. Yeah, I know Chris, you gave me a lot of guidance when I was down there because, you know, there is there is an absolute ton of rail fanning to be done down there as well. You know, in between the uh, events and there's a lot of events going on, obviously with the national convention. But if you want to break away, uh, talk a little bit about some of your you know kind of the rail fanning uh, opportunities that are down there, Chris. Well, so Fort Worth was uh, really the center of our our railroad, um, you know, where all the railroads came. Uh, even though Dallas is sometimes considered the bigger city here, Fort Worth was the the railroad center. And so uh, there's actually some maps also at the stockyards where you can see how um, how they kind of advertised it and, and promoted it as being this like uh, spider, which is where the tarantula train, which is the old name of the uh, Grapevine Vintage Railroad used to be called the Tarantula Train. Anyway, so this uh, made this spider around Fort Worth and all these different directions. And in the middle of that was um, pretty very close. Now we're um, Interstate 35W and um, Interstate 30 crossed, uh, which was a place called Tower 55. And, or, uh, the interstates crossed there now, but you know, back in the day, that was where Tower 55 was, and that was where the main east-west line, which was the Texas Pacific, the main north-south lines, which is a whole bunch of them, but, you know, Santa Fe and um, uh, other versions of the TMP and, you know, the K, you know, all the all the railroads kind of came together in this one area, downtown Fort Worth. Uh, sadly, they tore down Tower 55 last year, uh, which was quite a landmark, and uh, but uh, it was never accessible uh, because the railroad owned all the property around there. You could and still can go down there uh, there's a piece of public land that's close enough that you can you can watch trains cross at the at all the diamonds there. So that's that's kind of one of the Fort Worth centric places. Uh, we mentioned Saginaw, which is another set of diamonds where the um, the Fort Worth and Denver now BNSF came and crossed the Santa Fe now BNSF, but uh, uh, and then also the uh, uh, Rock Island came across there, kind of parallel the Fort Worth and Denver. So you had all these diamonds there. That's still a super super busy place. And a lot of fun. And there's literally a public place to sit there and watch trains, which is, you know, and there's not a big fence around it or anything. It's just a place you can sit there and watch trains. You can sit on the porch of the Chamber of Commerce, which looks like an old depot. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, you go on the Dallas side, um, and one of the tours that I think comes in later, um, you know, in the non rail tours is you know, a tour down around Dealey Plaza, right? Which is uh, one of those kind of historic places that people come to when they come to Dallas. Uh, but, but, you know, you hear about the triple underpass, you hear about the grassy knoll, you hear about all these things, you realize those are all railroad places. The triple underpass is a railroad under, uh, the railroad going over these three streets, you know, and things like that. So this is all like right next to Union Station. And so you take the TRE down there, you take the, uh, the A train or you take the DART or you take, um, you know, any of the trains that go into Dallas, they take you to Union Station and you can basically get off there see Dealey Plaza, go to the Conspiracy Museum, go to the Sixth Floor Museum, whatever you want to do. Um, check out the trains, ride the dart trains. Um, you know, there's lots of train things down there as well. And these are all, you know, generally very easy to access public places. You know, there's also a big yard. You can go up above Centennial Yard. There's a couple overpasses and, and see the entire, That's not, it's called Davidson Yard now, but that's the big, text. It used to be TMP, but now Union Pacific uh, Yard in Fort Worth and, um, you know, we mentioned a lion shard. It's a little harder to see, but luckily there's a tour that takes you right there. So, but yeah, there's lots of uh, lots of rail fanning here. 
Yeah, it depends for, on what you want. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, for sure. I mean, you, you've got it. You know, even in modern names, you've got it covered. BNSF, UP, uh, CPKC now, and uh, and then <laughs> and then your locals, the Fort Worth and Western, and there's just there's a so much there, and I'm, I haven't probably even covered all of them, and <laughs> probably left a few out, but. It's just a lot of opportunity if you can if you can take the heat that's going to be that'll be the challenge i guess to get out there early and maybe go out a little bit later and uh but a lot of a lot of opportunities to get out there and uh watch some trains go by maybe inside your car with the ac going there you go For- one thing that's kind of unique about texas that people especially coming from the east don't understand is uh, you know, we have a lot of wide open spaces and not a lot of trees uh, you can see the trains from a long ways away. You know, you don't have to get like that super one spot that gets you that one perfect view of the tracks because you can be, you know, 10 miles away and probably still see the train and you get up on a high spot. You can see it. And uh, it's pretty easy to rail fan down here. The, the highways all follow the railroads. And, you know, I recommend everybody um, basically go to Dean Ferris's and then just keep going for a little ways, head towards Wichita. Uh, Wichita Falls and hit the Wichita Falls sub because that's that's a lot of fun rolling along US 287 there with the Fort Worth and Denver uh, trains coming down from Colorado and it's pretty cool or Amarillo and yep yeah that's definitely one of my favorite spots as I'm making the trek out to Bridgeport I'm uh, checking all of that out along the way now Riley you're down a little farther south and in, in the capital city of Austin uh, well, Although some may not make the trek all the way down to Austin, do you do get yourself out there and do a bit of rail fanning in the Austin area? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got we've got a couple of really nice spots. Um, one of them is uh, McNeil, where we've got uh, Austin White Lime, uh, which is uh, an industry that's been there since the 1800s, I believe. Uh, they're the ones who founded the town of McNeil, or or the the crossing there at McNeil, um, and. Uh, they, they still um, support the, the little post office building that was there. And so uh, we have a bunch of local railroaders who still gather there. Uh, I believe it's Wednesdays for uh, lunch uh, and watch the activity there. Because uh, we've got UP, BNSF comes through there. Um, and then we've got our light rail system and, uh, and our local um, local railroad, too, that is servicing all the industries downtown and whatnot still. Um, so a lot of railroads come together there and there's a nice little porch sitting out general store and, and post office, uh, and people eat their lunch and just watch some trains go by. So it's a lot of fun there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a spot I have not made it down to, but, uh, I'm surely hoping to, uh, make my way down to Austin on one of these trips to the, uh, to the Lone Star State. I want to get back to the convention because I'm looking through on the uh, clinic page and th- we just don't have enough time in this podcast to go through all of these. But the, the list is just absolutely amazing. And you certainly, if you go through this, you're, you're definitely going to be able to find something that's going to draw your attention, something you're not uh, you're going to want to see. Uh, Riley, is there anything in here of all the uh, clinics that are available uh or is there something that is a must for you? That's a really interesting question. Um, there, there are some favorite people that I like to, to see whenever, you know, I get a chance. Um, we've got um, uh, a really um, good uh, DCC electrical guy uh, in Texas, uh, Tom Pearson. Um, and um, he, he is able to explain the intricacies of DCC using JMRI, uh, how to wire up stuff, how to get the most out of um, sugar cube speakers and things like that. Um, and so he's always somebody that, um, that I try to watch uh, whenever we get together like this. Uh, but then we have people you know, from all over the country coming. Uh, we've got uh, Pete Steinmetz who's talking about dead rail and I'm a, I'm a dead rail guy. Uh, so I'll definitely be going to that and uh, meeting Pete for the first time in person. Um, but, you know, dead rail is, I think, the, the future of model railroading. So I think that's one to look into and um, see what's coming down the pike. Um, but then we've got, 
you know, people like Joe Fugate and, um, you know, national people who, who come to these things. Um, and that's one of the, I think one of the treats of going to a national convention is that, um, you know, kind of the, the world of model railroading comes to you and into your neck of the woods. Uh, and you're able to sample all these different, um, people and their ideas and information, um, in your, in your region and in your home territory. So I, I think we have maybe, 80 or 90 unique clinics going on. Uh, I haven't counted them up recently, but most of them are being given at least twice. So, you know, in case you, you have a conflict with something you want to see, cause we, we've got, you know, six different clinic rooms going on at the same time. Uh, so it's likely that there's going to be more than one that you want to see. And so having it uh, offered at a different time really helps. Um, so yeah, lots, lots going on in the clinics. I think the clinics are really kind of the heart of any sort of gathering like this. Um, I think it's one of the more popular things you get to see, see people that, you know, you've read about or heard about, um, and you just get to, uh, to sample a lot of different knowledge in one place over the course of the week. Yeah, for sure. And, and for Chris, there's a gentleman here I see that, uh, you turned me on to, which is the editor of the Cowcatcher magazine, Tim Blackwell. He's putting on a clinic, hints for a better, uh, better layout photography. Uh, is there another clinic in there that you are uh, looking forward to, Chris? I have not looked at clinics a whole lot because I am very busy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to point out the modeling at the master's clinics, which I have done in the past and I thoroughly enjoyed and thought they were worth every penny that they cost, which of course they're extra fair because they give you all these things to take with you. Right. Um, but uh, I would definitely look at any of the modeling, the master clinics because, uh, all the guys that they have working on those are just top notch and they're all people that are coming in from out of state. So I'm from out of country to, to present these, um, actually one of them's from Texas, but anyway, so, um, you know, the ever popular Arduino clinic by our own speed molar is fun. And, uh, I've helped with that. I've helped him put those on. So I can tell you those are top notch. And I believe that we might have a, a secret, uh, follow-up clinic that they're trying to get on, which is our another local guy, uh, has recently figured out how to make your Arduino talk to you so you could re record little individual words and have them all strung together into uh, sayings like if you wanted uh, you know, your, st your trains to be announced at your station or something. I heard that that might be something coming up. So keep your eye open for Arduino clinics. Those are good. Uh, but you know, there's all the clinics. The, you know, building scenery and some historic ones and I, I know that there's some clinics being offered about the kind of the history of the area because those are always always fun. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of cool clinics. Yeah, if you some of them I've seen before, some of them I've never seen. So I'll tell you, if you find yourself bored in in the week of August 20th to 26th, you've done something terribly wrong because there is so much here, and and, and absolutely amazing. Let's talk a bit about the, uh, the, the towards the end of the the uh, uh, convention, which is the National Train Show. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great announcements and a lot of whole uh, bunch of things going on at the National Train Show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I have actually never been to a National Train Show. Uh, I went to the St. Louis Convention last year but got sick halfway through, so I missed the National Train Show. Um, but from what I've heard, yes, we've got a lot of, um, uh, layouts that are going to be there, modular layouts, uh, that'll come and set up. Um, you know, we've got everything from Lego to T-Track, um, you know, HO scale, N scale, uh, lots of layouts that are going to be right there, um, you know, on, on the showroom floor as it were. Uh, but we've also got, uh, you know, vendors from all over. We've got some local vendors like Brad's trains, um, Harris hobbies here in Texas. Uh, but, um, you know, there'll be manufacturers there. Uh, Inner Mountain's going to be there. Uh, Rapido's going to be there. So, you know, if you have, you know, questions about products, um, this is a real good opportunity to get in and talk to those people that are actually designing and manufacturing these things for us. Uh, get the inside scoop on stuff. Um, hear what's coming next. Um, see the you know the latest releases that are coming out, um, and you know get to talk to the people who are you know actually making these things. So there's going to be um, 
you know, lots of exhibitors. Uh, there's, uh, there's probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 different exhibitors, um, including, you know, like Combox going to be there. Um, Walther's is going to be there. Um, Z track magazine is going to be there. So, you know, a wide variety, all scales, all, all types of, um, uh, products. Um, so come spend your money. There's going to be lots of opportunity. Absolutely. So I guess the next step, if you, if you've heard all this and this excites you that you're going to get yourself down to the Dallas Fort Worth area on August 20th to 26th, I don't think it's no better person than the registrar himself to tell us how to get registered for the uh, national convention. Well, you can send a large check to my PO box, but that probably wouldn't do too much good. I might uh, I might forget where it came from or who who it belonged to. So, best thing to do is go online, use the website, which is there's a link to the registration page on the uh, 2023 TexasExpress.com website. Just right up there at the top, look for register, and that'll take you to our Event Squid, which is the software the NMRA is um, using. And, you know, if you have any problems registering, there's a link to my email, my phone number, and just about any way. You can send up Carrier Pigeon this way if you want, or Pony Express stops down the street a little ways. So um, let me know if you have any questions or need any help registering. Uh, we also have a way you can send a check in, but it doesn't go to me. It goes to our treasurer. I don't know, crazy thought, but... Uh, um, if, if, if you're not comfortable doing it online, we do have a way you can mail it in and there's information and a form you can print out on the website on how to do that. Now, always good to register ahead. Oh yeah. Especially if you want to go to any, any of the tours we just were talking about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are early. To fill up. Yes, they are starting to fill up. We are, you know, we're over 600 people so far. You know, so we still, still have some more to go to hit our thousand, but, uh, the tours are starting to fill up. Yeah, the tours you are want to, oh, I was going to say, and you want to register uh, uh, before the end of June because uh, that's when early bird pricing ends and the price will go up uh, a few bucks that you could spend at the National Train Show instead. Yeah, so you definitely want to get on it because you're going to want to have some extra bucks in your pocket for all the things that you can do in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that week. Um it's going to be a great time. I'm, I'm so looking forward to being down there with you guys and getting to meet Riley in person. And then for Chris, I'm looking forward to getting over there and seeing all the changes you've made on your layout since my last time I visited, which segues us into layout tours. Uh, so, Chris, why don't you tell us all the prep that you've been making to participate in these big layout tours that are going on? Well, you know, I've been putting in about – six hours a day on the layout <laughs> seven days a week so just a little here and there uh so many different things <laughs> um my layout still didn't have a lot of scenery so maybe a little bit of that but not still i've got other things i want to do um there's even a bigger project coming up this weekend because we're building a crew lounge because i'm just about to run out of space inside the actual layout building itself as i am nearing the time when maybe not the helix will be built but the table that the helix sits on will be built and when i take up that space there's suddenly nowhere for everybody to congregate so we had to we had to do something so anyway so yeah lots of things going on added at a bench work at a track put up put down flooring put up curtains you know polish this clean that put in some scenery built structures even got my wife helping me build structures <laughs> so anyway lots going on uh, and you're gonna, way, we're like ninety, we're like ninety days away, less than ninety days away now. So uh, yes, get close. And What's you're having operating sessions too, Chris. So that's that's even kind of oh. added pressure, right? <laughs> this yeah. is a, so so. It should be no surprise to anybody that listened to my interview. My main interest in the hobby is not making little trees and all this stuff. My main interest is operating. So I decided that at one time I was like, eh, you know, I should probably put a bunch of scenery in. And I realized I got a lot of layout to build. So my focus has been finishing the, at least the bottom deck of the layout so that operations can be kind of at its fullness for the convention. So yeah, we've, we're making a lot of changes and have been making a lot of changes. I've been operating every other week for several months now. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that by the time uh, I have three operating sessions that we will be, um, you know, things will be smooth that I can reach the stage. Uh, first operating session after I kind of quit the construction stuff, not my first operating session, but yep. I had 
we had our, our once every three years um, interchange. We call the DFW interchange. We we trade places with Houston and Tulsa and have a round robin thing. It's a it's an invitational operating weekend. We have that in October. I did that. And then I didn't operate until February, I think, or something like that. And so it took me four days to stage. <laughs> and I realized, well, if it takes me four days, I can't have an operating. I can't have three operating sessions during the clinic convention. But by the way. Uh, one of my operating sessions is the day after the convention's over, which many of you guys have uh, decided to go home. However, I should point out that that's also going to be Operate with Gordy Day. Oh, nice. So um, nice. we uh, Gordy is on the way to the airport. We're going to operate in the morning on the Sunday after the convention's over, and uh, then he's going to go off to the airport and fly home to S- Scotland. And so anybody interested in operating with Gordy... There you go. You got Stay to an extra day or come by on your way home because I'm conveniently located on the way out of town. The goodbye to Gordy operating session at Chris Atkins. So That's you're, right. you're one of what? Th- I think I, I lost count here. I think 30 different layouts or, or more. Do you, do you have the number? Operating or on tours? Even on tours, just in general, the layouts that are. And the, layout is on, the number of layouts on tours is probably a lot bigger than 30, but the number of operating layouts is probably in the high teens to 20 range i think which is amazing that's amazing to have that you guys got a great group and some very familiar names here with dean yeah. ferris and of course yourself and greg mccomas guys that have been on the show yeah. so, and so greg, uh, greg is a great example of our typical layout right so typically we don't have layouts that could take 12 people and there's a lot of places where 12 people layouts are small layouts especially with you know they have the idea of a crew lounge and not everybody's operating at the same time uh, right. our typical layout here is is a three person layout a four person layout because you know you, you've mentioned this before i heard you just mention this with joe well we don't have basements right so you gotta think outside the box and uh, uh, a spare bedroom layout or like like uh, greg's layout which is in a you know like this little study area is is very typical and greg's layout is outstanding over the top amazing and he's done more in this small barely a bedroom size space than most people are able to do in a basement. So, right. Right. I've got an opportunity to see that layout. I'm looking forward to seeing it again, along with yours and, 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 and yeah. a multitude of others, a lot of great I, opportunities here. I just want to stand back and see a whole bus get inside of his study. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll pack him in like I, a clown car. He might have I remember to, open we had up. an interchange and we got, he had four people on his, um, his operating session. Three people could be in the layout, and then one person had to stand outside the layout and operate out there. Yeah. And I think he gave up on that way of doing it, but it was actually a pretty fun way of doing it. Yeah. So there's a couple different ways to tour uh, the, the layout. You, there's a bus tour schedule that's here on the website, and then there looks like there's a self guided tour as well. So uh, a couple different ways to uh, get out there and see the layouts in the area. There's also the LD SIG tour, which is, is on Wednesday, and that is. Um, those, that layout tour is generally focused on on kind of creative ways of that people are building the layout or designing the layout, whereas the the bus tours are probably more geared towards like finished layouts. Although I managed to get on the bus tour and my layout's not finished, but um, hey, come for the barbecue. There oh wait, did know. I say there's a barbecue? No, I don't know. <laughs> About <laughs> people are going to be lining up for the barbecue, Chris. So, no, so. Yeah, uh, barbecue chips. I meant to say there chips, right? Barbecue chips. Or if you're from if you're from Scotland, crisps. They're barbecue crisps. There you go. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Riley, is there? Um, have you been able to see any of these uh, layouts uh, before? Is there something? That's- yeah, I've, yeah. I've gone up for the Dallas interchange uh, a couple of different times. Got to operate on a lot of these layouts. Um, you know, we've, we've mentioned Dean Ferris a couple of times already. Um, that's just a, a stellar in scale layout. Um, it, it operates flawlessly. It's got a great operating scheme. Uh, it's fully scenic, it's beautiful to look at. Um, and you know, we've got a lot more layouts just like that, uh, all over the DFW area too. Uh, I think we've got maybe eight different master model railroaders whose layouts are, are going to be on tour. Um, so you'll get to see, you know, the, the creme de la creme of, uh, of the hobby, uh, and have them, uh, show off their, their wares and what they've been working on. Um, so there's, there's lots for everybody, you know, a lot of different scales, a lot of different, uh, prototype railroads, a lot of freelance railroads. We've got narrow gauge. Um, there's, there's really something for everybody. Um, and there's even a, a live steam, um, 
uh, layout too, um, which is something I just just noticed recently and don't know much about. Um, but there's going to be a special bus tour on Wednesday to ride the seven and a half inch gauge uh, outdoor live steam. Um, and I don't even I don't even know where that is. Do you know about that, Chris? Yeah, it's in Terrell, which is on the east side of Dallas. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, we've lost a lot of great HO scale model railroads in Dallas Fort Worth area because of live steam. They basically go out there and get hooked on riding around on their trains, and then they never touch their HO scale again, ever. And that, that's why I've never gone out to the Comanche and yeah. Indian Gap Railroad. Uh, that's right. I know that I will just fall in love with it and spend all yep. my money on that and never touch yep. my yeah. little yeah. stuff. Yeah, when the locomotive costs as much as a decent used car, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's it's a an interesting hobby. It's a commitment. That's right. <laughs> Maybe we should say, for the sake of model railroading, do not go out and see the live steam. But uh, uh, it's, it is it's it is fun. I have to admit. And also, by the way, these guys are operators. They're not just running the trains. They're getting into a switch list. They run four man crews, locomotive, head brakeman, rear brakeman, conductor. Wow. And if you're a brakeman, you are out there moving cars and you've got to be on top of your game because guess what with those couplers smash uh and you have your hand in the way you're getting your finger smashed it's not just like uh you're knocking a car off the track but by the way that happens too and it's a lot of work getting that's what's the cars but the local boat is back on the track if you get one derailed yeah. so it's it's a it's a fun fun hobby however it, august is probably not the best time to take it up so yeah i'm just saying uh but so so right. But the, go out to Terrell. It's all in the shade and the trees and stuff. Comanche Indian Gap, which is uh, the Riley mentioned, by the way, is it's a ranch out in the middle of West Texas. That is, it's not like it's not like the big mountain in uh, Oregon size, but it's it's a big 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 space for for live steam railroad. Wow, miles and miles of track. Well, I'll definitely be adding that to my to-do list while train, I'm down train there. Mountain, that's the one in Oregon. Absolutely. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not like you can just show up and ride trains. You got to go out there when they're having an event. So. Yeah. Yep. But uh, if you're at all interested, I know the guys that get you out there. Well, I'd be definitely, if not this trip, I'll definitely be back down to Texas and be checking things out. I've got a long list for that week and looking forward to seeing a lot of familiar faces and folks that have been on the show and folks that have been uh, listeners and fans. Okay, I'm looking forward to being down there and, and, and seeing everybody and meeting you too. Well, I've already seen your layout, Chris. I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, updates and meeting Riley in person. So, uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on around the layout getting us all fired up for the uh, texas express hey well thanks for having us on there ray yeah i remember a supercharged and high speed texas express thank you for joining us for this episode of around the layout learn more about today's show on our facebook page facebook.com backslash around the layout show your support by becoming an operating crew member at patreon.com backslash around the layout podcast Past episodes and more can be found on our website, aroundthelayout.com. And send us your feedback, aroundthelayout at gmail.com. Thanks for hanging out with us, Around the Layout.